My wonderful peoples, how are you doing? Welcome back to Theo is back. Yes, it's been a while. I had to take a break for my mental health, but also for some personal reasons, which some of you might already guess what I've been busy. Uh, and also, of course, my main business, the Chigali Feed Gym here in Chigali, has been flourishing once again. After this whole pandemic thing is kind of under control, we have less restrictions here in Chigali. So people are starting finding, finding their ways to the gym, which I am loving a lot. So in today's video, guys, I want to talk about your comments. Yes, I read my comments, even though sometimes I don't reply to all of them, especially in the last six months or so, but I read all of them. And every time when I post something with my girl, any type of video, I always get comments like this. So, let's talk about it. Marriage. In the last video that I made, which was a live stream, I asked the question, do men need marriage nowadays? I listed out a few pros and cons. Uh, in short, let me list them one more time. The pros of, for men getting married are living a longer and healthier life, um, Easy access to regular sex, very important. Um, you enter a higher social class, you know, here in Rwanda they call you Umugabo, means you are a man now. And lastly, you have a true lifelong partner who's going to be with you in sickness and in health until death do you part. So which is also quite a big deal, especially for men who tend to have a more loner life. Um, so having at least one partner with you is a big, big deal, which you can share everything with. But there are also some cons, or as I call, some risks. Uh, marriage does come with living with a woman and also means you lose some of your personal space. Uh, the finances, the more you can provide, you tend to be more loved. And when, you, when there's a divorce, you tend to, there's a risk of you losing a lot of your finances. And also, when there's a divorce, also you tend to lose the kids as well because I think like 80% of all divorces with children, the children go to their mothers. And lastly, which was a shocker for me, you also risk not getting any sex. Yeah, it's a real risk. So despite all of these things, every time when the list comes into the picture, I get comments like these. Do you guys even know what it is to get married in this generation, in 2022? Feminism is at its all-time high. The red pill community has become mainstream. There seems to be a huge gender disparity between modern women and modern men. Modern men want traditional women, even though they don't have the means to support a traditional woman. And modern women want equality in everything, but still prefer men to take up traditional roles in relationships. So. How do we solve this? If you were like me, of marrying age in this generation, would you get married right now? According to the comment section, your opinion is very clear. Well, guess what guys? I understood the message. I, Mutesa Teofi, having heard what the law requires, the spouses, agree without any concern that you, Mutaganzgoa Delis, be my wife and we live together as per our agreement in accordance with the law of the Republic of Rwanda. I, Mutaganzgoa Nidiana Delis, have heard what the law requires spouses, agree without any coercion that you, Teofil Mutesa, be my husband and we live together as per our agreement and in accordance with the law of the Republic of Rwanda. A few weeks ago, me and Delis officially tied the knot. We got married right here in Rwanda. You are now speaking to a married man as of last month now. And now that I've gone through this whole process of getting married in Rwanda, 
I thought I might share with you some lessons that I took out of it that I wish I knew or people had told me before I could get married. And this video is specifically geared towards men, men like me, basically, uh, who want to get married and who are about to get married in the near future because I, tend, I don't tend to find a lot of resources for men talking about this subject that is also coming from men. So I may not know why you want to get married, but if you are planning to get married, consider these five lessons that I recently learned. Lesson number one, find a marriage-minded girl that wants to get married ASAP. This might sound redundant because if you're like me, you probably are dating someone who you consider wifey material. You probably have talked here and there about it, but be specific about it and put out a timeline basically, especially for, for the girl. Because in these modern times, people don't have to get married, so some of them might put marriage on like the third or fourth shelf. And if you want to get married, usually as a man, when you make the decision, you can move real fast. But women tend to go up and down sometimes, so you want it to be clear from the get-go so that you can move forward fast. So I had the marriage talk with my wife right after she finished her schooling, where I honestly and seriously asked her whether she was ready and wanted to get married. Now, in my personal case, I knew from the get-go that she wanted to get married and have children, but once I had had this talk and I started making moves towards getting married, I encountered some resistance from her end. This was a huge debate thing that we went through in, in our relationship, but I later found out, that was, that was my conclusion, that she was not quite ready to get married at that exact point because she was not happy with her weight. So after discussing a whole lot of things, we came up with a game plan where she will first lose some weight and then we'll get married the year after. Lesson number two, take your time to pop the question. If your lady is ready to be engaged, great. If you're not ready, take your time. This is also your engagement, you know, so make it memorable for yourself. In our case, it took me one and a half year from the moment I decided I want to marry this girl, you know, and propose to her, to the moment that I actually went down on my knee and proposed to her. Luckily, in the meantime, I got a lot of example rings that she wanted to have, you know, that her exact taste. So it also took me a while to find it, to order it, and to get it shipped to Rwanda, which was not an easy task, I must add. And after I received it as well, I kept it in my possession for a few weeks, just waiting for the right moment. My one big criteria that I have for this whole engagement was that I wanted it to be a surprise. Even though she was really ready for it and she was expecting it any moment, I still took my time and made sure that she was surprised. And I'm glad to say I succeeded on that task. Hmm. Lesson number three. Once you are engaged, you should know that you're about to receive a whole lot of expectations and dreams coming from a whole lot of people in your circle, mostly from the women in your life. The first one being your new fiancé. She probably has thought or dreamt about this wedding long before she even met you, so she has a specific idea or dreams that she wants to go achieve. And also her female friends and family also have a certain dreams and ideas about this wedding, which they will put onto her, which will come to you. Some of these dreams or ideas may be realistic or not realistic, depending on where you are in the situation, but you will still have to deal with them. So I don't know how other people do these kind of things, but the way I kind of handle this expectation is by delaying the news. So that's why when we got engaged, very little people in my circle actually even knew about it. I didn't even post it on my social media because there was just so many things that came to our plate, basically, from excitement to expectation to money issues to traveling. COVID was happening. So I took it slow so that I knew what was coming. And by the time I told some, someone something, I had already planned out all the scenarios, basically. So lesson number four. Now that you are fully engaged, people are up to date about it, you want to get married, you need to get your paperwork in check. So I don't know how it works where you are, but here in Rwanda, in order to get married legally, you need to show a birth certificate and the proof of celibacy that you are single. 
Now, especially for Rwandans like us, who were born right before or right after the genocide against the Tutsi, some of the paperwork regarding birth certificates are not well documented or not easy to find. And for us, it was the same case. It took us a whole lot of effort, like even, I think, like three months to get a birth certificate. So it was also another stressful thing that added to the whole marriage perspective. If you seriously want to get married, I would suggest to start working on your paperwork ASAP. Trust me, it will save you a whole lot of headache in the long run. And lastly, make sure to prioritize your relationship with your spouse, with your fiancé. This getting married thing is a beautiful thing. However, it is very stressful. It comes from all these 110 expectations coming from all your family and friends who are excited, who want to have so many information. And it all comes from both sides, from you, from your family, from her family. And it tends to become exhausting eventually, especially when it comes to picking, making choices, spending money. And this will become a true test for your relationship as it was for us. So one thing that I've learned is really to make sure that you discuss big things between you guys first and then announce them to your family as a united front. For example, we came out the, the gate telling our family and friends that we wanted to have a wedding here in Rwanda and in Belgium. Little did they know that this was actually a big sore point between us. She wanted to have in Belgium, I wanted to have it in Rwanda and we had a huge discussion going on back and forth. It was actually the first real big thing that we both really did not agree upon eye to eye. However, we discussed it and came out with a solution and that one solution is the thing that we proposed to our parents and luckily they were okay with it. But if we would have come out of it and taught us and continued this discussion with them, oh my God, this would have been a terrible, terrible thing. I can tell you from experience right now. So if you know someone who is planning to get married, please go give them a hug. They are probably going through a lot of things, emotions, which are all not positive. It surprised me how many negative moments it took to create this one big happy moment. So, good luck whoever is getting ready to marry. And uh, if you need any help, comfort, information, just let me know. I just went through it myself, so it's still kind of fresh in my mind. And that's also the main reason why I was making this video. If you like this kind of content about this topic, marriage, Rwandan marriage, let me know. I can still make a few videos now that I'm still, uh, uh, you know, fresh about it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification, of course, and I'll see you in the next video. Check also me out on Patreon and on my podcast. I will have the same video, but in a longer version. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.